It's my pleasure and honor to introduce two of our guests, namely Ali Alice Out and her son Walker Dennis Out. Ali's ancestry hails from Rize in Hampshire, our historical Armenia, presently in Turkey. She was born in Kurubile, which is uh, a suburb of Istanbul, and subsequently she migrated to Germany under very dire circumstances. She bore two children, Dennis, who is with us, and her daughter, Jasmine. She holds a master's degree in sociology, and she specialized in family psychotherapy. She is the author of Hampshire Armenians in the Mirror of History. Originally, it was published in Turkish. Subsequently, it was translated into German and Greek, but not in Armenian or in English. Like many of us of mixed marriage, she tried as much as she could to impart her culture, her identity, to her children with extreme difficulty. Her son, Dennis, is an accomplished painter. It did not take long to see the voice of the Hamptons, the voice of the victims of the genocide of the Armenians to express itself in his art. Memorable in his accomplishments is his participation in an exhibition devoted to the genocide. It was held in an old concentration camp, Sachsenhausen camp, it was attended by 250,000 people. He was one of the participants. You will see samples of his uh, paintings later during the lunch break. Their presence here today evokes lots of thoughts, emotions, and reminiscences. Because of time constraints, what I will do today is just read a, an editorial that I had written nine months ago, as if that editorial was written for today. It's called, Lost and Found Armenians Need Our Help. In the early to late 70s, some diaspora Armenian students studying in Yerevan, having established a patriotic and private group, which was called Khampak, engaged in the study of various aspects of life in Armenia and Armenians in diaspora. They were particularly dissatisfied with the accepted interpretations of historical events and policies that had contributed to shaping Soviet and diaspora Armenian societies. Their efforts culminated in the establishment for diaspora students of a historical society named after Moses Korenazi. Members of the group included Marxists, Rangavars, Hunchaks, Tashnak, and Asala sympathizers. This is in Armenia. And of course, Chezoks. At its peak, the group boasted a membership representing close to 10% of the diaspora student body. At that time, there were about anywhere between 400 to 500 diaspora students in Armenia. The task of the group was not limited to research, but included an action plan that primarily was gauged to disseminate the notion of demands versus recognition with respect to the genocide of Armenians. Furthermore, through a variety of student activities, it strived to cultivate an atmosphere of political and intellectual tolerance and provide a contextual experience of cooperation that could be transported to Spiel. There were anecdotal reports, reports at the time that many orphans of the genocide and their descendants 
had converted to Islam to avoid Turkish or Kurdish persecution. These forced converts would occasionally confide their roots to strangers. It was rumored. A sizable portion of these individuals apparently lived in Kurdish areas, and some had joined the recently formed, recently at that time I mean, formed militant Kurdistan Workers' Party. Others had left Turkey for Europe, taking advantage of demand for cheap labor in Germany and in other European countries. The, mem the members of Sampat were interested to know more about these crypto Armenians, that's what we call them, crypto Armenians, and possibly establish some contacts. One of the members was entrusted, actually commissioned, to travel to Turkey, particularly to Kurdish areas, and file a report. Listening to detailed descriptions after that were brought back, it became evident that earlier reports were not fiction. In village after village, many old and young people had come forward to tell their stories. And this is in 1970s we're talking about. That they or their parents were of Armenian origin, that they had adopted Islam, had changed their way of life, their language, and married Turks or Kurds to survive. Over the past 40 years, some Hamshan Armenians and crypto Armenians from Kurdish areas and elsewhere in Turkey have migrated to Europe establishing communities, particularly in Germany. For a variety of complex reasons, which are beyond the scope of this editorial, they, by and, by and large, have remained isolated from the mainstream Armenian life. One wonders whether an important contributory element to this isolation has been the unwelcoming attitude of mainstream Armenians themselves. Is it without cause that Alice Aliye Alt, who is present today, a resident of Germany, who has converted to Christianity and has tried to raise her children as Armenians and whose artist son has presented an art exposition about the genocide, recently made unflattering remarks about the absence of a welcoming embrace by Armenian communities. She stated, this is nine months ago, many of my dearest friends, members of the enlightened Turkish intelligentsia, help in our struggle to discover and establish our identity. And in the recognition of the known and unknown chapters of the genocide of Armenians. Also, our German and Greek humanist friends in Germany and elsewhere were always at our side. I cannot tell the same about most of the huge Armenian community here, who until recently were suspicious of us. Having witnessed the uncaring attitude of native Armenians of Armenia towards their compatriots after the repatriation in the 40s, 50s, 60s, the disrespect of Indian Armenians towards their own relatives who had migrated from Persia to India later in history, the critical approach of established Armenian communities towards newcomers in a variety of other countries. It is not unreasonable to think that what Mrs. Alt says corresponds to reality. Armenians like to speak about unity. They write articles, compose songs, and shout at the top of their lungs about unity. Yet, when the opportunity is presented to help reintegrate lost Armenians who yearn to rejoin Armenian family, we fail miserably. That's what the past 40 years tell us about the policy of the Hanshanites and other crypto-Armenians who have settled in Europe. I will stop it here because it goes further. So that's the message that I would like to give.
I may be wrong, my impression may be wrong. However, let's think a bit critically about ourselves. Thank you very much and welcome, Ali. Arif Misurian is the translator. So, Aliyah will present her talk in Turkish and there will be on-spot translation. Thank you.